Everybody's got a story, you just have to listen. Oh, I'm Joe Partavilla, and this is Good Listen, and I am a Capricorn. I'm not sure if that means anything to you, but if you are into astrology, you get what it means. And my guest today is really, really into astrology. Her name is Susan Miller, and she is the founder of Astrology Zone. For over three decades, Susan Miller has been a star in the world of astrology, featured on TV shows, magazines, newspapers. But she started her website back in 1995, back before people had computers. It's still going strong today. And I've known Susan for years, but I've never really asked her how she got into it and how she made it into a career. So let's find out. Susan Miller, welcome to Good Listen. I am so happy to be here and to see you again. After many years, I lost you, and we found yes, you. Yes, it's, it's, it's been a long time, Susan, and I, I miss getting, because if everyone doesn't know, Susan Miller does this amazing calendar she puts out every year with all the horoscopes, and so I miss that. So, Susan, thank you for sending my 2024 <laughs> one. I really appreciate it. But I want to start by talking with the, simpl- the simplicity of astrology. Like, I get that it's very popular. People love it. But I, uh, it, it is odd to me when people lean on it. So I'll, I'm going to bring up an example. Too like, much. I know people... Yeah, I know people in my life who are like, they've messed something up, they're having a bad week, and they're like, my Mercury is in retrograde, and, and it's messy, and I, I butchered it there. But like, people are assimilating to like everything that's going on in their life to what's going on in astrology. How did yeah. that happen? Some people get obsessed. I'm not like that, but I always knew where what, what's happening in the sky. I, I know how they're talking to each other, the planets, and what it means. But some people use it too much, and I I don't want them to lean on it. I want them to use it as a creative tool because there's really nothing better than astrology to come up with a whole array of answers to a dilemma that you're having. It's really good for problem solving. So I love that. And it's not a cookbook. You know, producers (laughs) call me all the time, who's going to win the election? I'm like, I have no idea. We have to vote. (laughs) You know, two candidates of this year that have very good charts, both of them. Uh, Kamala has Gemini rising. She's a Libra. And Mr. Trump is a Gemini with Leo rising. And Gemini is the golden child right now. They're having their emerald sparkling year. But a person, let's say one had a really bad chart. A person with a bad chart could work harder. What nature gives you is a lot of energy when you have a lot of bad squares and hard challenges and obstacles. It makes you work harder. So it's not a cookbook and it's not destiny. We all have to vote. But I can, <laughs> <laughs> But if the candidates called me, I would tell them where their strengths are. I love looking for talent. I can also show them... The time can do certain things where they'll have the most success, when to initiate, when to hold back, when to double check, things like that. And it's great for success because it helps you with your the time you're given to use it productively. Oh, I love that. And we're going to get into charts in a bit. Uh, but I, I didn't joke about the Mercury in retrograde. When people say that and just so maybe is listening to this and like don't know what that means, what does that mean when Mercury's in retrograde? Even my postman heard about it and was talking to me about Mercury rules all communication. It rules the mail. It rules all digital things. It was like your computer may be giving you trouble right now. Um, things wear out during Mercury retrograde, so you wind up going to the repair shop a lot. But also people misconstrue what you're trying to say sometimes. But the good side of Mercury retrograde is that you reconnect from people from your past, like you and I. <laughs> They used to be on your show and you were at, in New York. So um, that part is a nice part of Mercury retrograde. Um, but there's there's other things where you get forgetful. You lose things. You leave your, your phone in the taxi because you were thinking so much about your next appointment. So we have to be more deliberate during Mercury retrograde. It's one thing that affects everyone pretty uniformly, although Gemini and Virgo feel it a little bit more or people working in communications or transportation sometimes you get strikes or you get weather delays we're going to have one two days before thanksgiving november 25th and it's going to go to december 15th 
that's kind of tough for holiday shopping. So I'm going to say right now, all your listeners have to shop in October. I know that you're saying, no, I don't want to. But you know what? The stores will be all decked out and ship early before the 15th because there's going to be weather delays. And especially if you're sending toys to a little child, you want that under the tree. So just out the door by the 5th of December, no later, wrap everything up, get a friend to help you. <laughs> if you're overwhelmed, we're all overwhelmed. <laughs> Comes yeah. the holiday. <laughs> but Absolutely. yeah, Mercury Brits were great. It, it's good for detectives to go back to the past and find the perpetrator. They get clues that were overlooked. But for the rest of us, it's not good to sign a contract or buy any electronics because Mercury rules the chips inside your computer or your smartphone or anything. And then software. Look at the problem Microsoft had worldwide. <laughs> Shutting down airplane flights. Now, that was right before Mercury started to write great, but we always feel it ahead stay away from the beginning and end dates give it a little space because the bookend dates the start and finish are always the toughest so okay. we don't want to just jump i will sign in contract the next day now sometimes we can't help it sometimes we just have to sign a contract in that case you'll find things that they never told you about the job <laughs> or whatever you're doing or the house that you oh never sign you know, buying a house is very expensive. You do not want to close on a house with a mercury red to it. And you want to, you know, get away from those states. All right. Great, great advice. Look at it. We, we, we're getting political advice. We're getting uh, economic advice from Susan Miller. Who knew what we we're going to get today? Uh, so let's start with the Susan Miller journey in terms of how you got here. You are the go-to person for astrology. As, as you know, people, uh, you mentioned People are calling you, asking you about the, the election, and people call you about random, like when a celebrity breaks up. That, that you are the go-to person when it comes to <laughs> astrology. But how did that happen? And I don't want to date you, but you've been doing this for quite a while. But how did you? How did you get into it? Next December, not this December, December two thousand twenty-five. I will be on the internet thirty years. Wow! And you know who started the same year? <laughs> Amazon. And match.com. You started your website in 1995 when most people weren't e didn't even know what the World Wide Web was. So how did you know it was going to be a thing? Well, um, actually, my mom was an astrologer. I mean, wish she's not with us anymore. And I think of her every day. I love to thought. But um, when I was nine years old, I said, Mommy, you never read my chart. And I want to know what I'm going to be when I grow up. So my mother said, okay, let me go get your chart. And she said, well, you're going to write. I said, write? No one in our family writes for a living. Write? Really? She said, yep. And I'm going to work on your grad heart. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like a mother? <laughs> and, it, and when you get the top of the chart where the 12 is on a clock, that's your ultimate contribution to the world. And she said, you usually you start fulfilling that 37, 38, 39, 40, somewhere in there. And she said, when you get to those ages, a newly invented form of communication, so new, we don't know the name of it yet, will change the way it work and be the channel in which you make your ultimate contribution to the world. I'm sitting there in a little pair of shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, Robert and Alan, how do you know that by looking at a piece of paper? <laughs> so you have Aquarius on the midheaven. Aquarius is what comes next. It is the future. So I put that in my pocket and I forgot about it. <laughs> I mean, and I was born with a birth defect. It was very, very serious. But I would get attacks where I would be fine. Let's say I would be walking with my mother, and then all of a sudden I would get excruciating pain in my knee, and I'd have to go to bed immediately and not move an inch of the bed for approximately eight weeks, always. I was bleeding internally at a very high rate. Since 
my childhood, I've had 40 blood transfusions. Well, they finally went in to see what was wrong. And I was in the hospital 11 months, but I did recover. And, um, but I would need more surgery, a lot more in the years to come. So when I was 14 and I had to give up high school, I did homeschool. And by the time I got to 16 and a half, I was much better. And then I went to NYU. I got in. I majored in, my, my father said, major in business because you always work. So I thought, well, that's a good practical piece of advice. So I did. And I actually graduated with an award most likely to succeed. So I had this high contrast life. So sick, away, isolated from everyone, then thrown into college. I was in junior high, and then I went to college, and there was nothing in between. I was out of high school for three years. Actually, I did go to freshman year, but uh, but that was in middle school. So it was high contrast. So during this whole time, uh, from your early teens to going to college, was astrology part of your life? I know obviously your mother was, but were you actively into it? I wanted a normal life. I wanted to see if I had anything to look forward to. And my mother wouldn't teach me astrology. I kept saying, will you teach me? No. Why? Because you'll study for a year and you'll think you know what you're doing and you'll read for your friends. I don't have any friends. I'm not the school. No, no, I'm not teaching. Finally, I was giving up on my mother. She wouldn't teach me. She said, you know, you really have to study 12 years or it won't be any good. I said, I will. No, I don't, I don't believe it. You're only a teenager. You don't know what 12 years is. So I wrote to Horoscope Magazine. And because my mother had it around the house and there was a section where they would do people's charts. So I said, will I ever walk again? I don't hear anything. And I'm doing my homework on my typewriter. And my mother walks in and she has an envelope in her arms like this. And she says, son, did you write to Horoscope Magazine? I said, um, I did. How do, you, how do you know? That was seven months ago. They never answered me. She said, I think you're in the latest issue. I said, why do you think that? She said, well, this is your birthday. This is your time of birth. And this is your problem. This is you. I said, I did write some. And they asked you, what did they say? She said, well, I didn't read it yet. Let's sit down together. And when you ask an astrologer any question, they have to be like a detective. They have to look at family support, lives in a big city, access to facilities, distinguished doctor, good attitude of the patient, good aspects for health. You have to look at the whole chart. And um, she came to the conclusion, yes, we think you'll work again. And I do. But I said to my mother, oh, you... You have to tell me what these words mean. I don't understand these words. She said, but Susan, you got your answer. And then I looked at her like, like this. And she said, oh my God, you want to check the editor in chief? I said, yes, yeah, so of course I do. <laughs> she said, you're impossible. You're never going to stop asking me. I said, never. You got that right. All right, I will teach you, but you have to stay with me 12 years and you will never read a chart outside of the family. And then when she said, I could tell people, I would do it for free. And I was an agent for commercial photographers. And after a while, people said, if you have a problem, dial 911 and Susan will answer. <laughs> and I would take a, a taxi down to their office. Thought, Your boyfriend broke up with you? Or your landlord is asking you to leave because he sold the building? Or... You just lost your job. I mean, I was I was running down to offices all over all over town, and um, I was getting a lot of experience. And uh, what really triggered the website is uh, we. I was an agent for commercial photographers, and my one photographer had just done Cheerios, so I took the creative director from Saatchi and Saatchi for lunch and in a beautiful restaurant to celebrate. And I said, hey, I'm going to do your chart. You know, you asked me. And I read his chart, and he said, you know, my wife would love you. I said, I would love her. What does she do? She's creative director of Warner Books. 
And Jackie would give me books and galleys, and we became fast friends. I loved her. And one day she said to me, I have a feeling about you. You're good with the astrology. I'm going to give you a small book. Let's see how you do. And I write the book. It sells out. She said, now I bring you upstairs to the webmaster. I said, the webmaster of Time Incorporated? She said, yeah. What do they want? She said, they haven't a clue. You're going to tell them what you want. Oh, okay. And I think that's very good advice. When you meet with someone high level, have a few ideas in your pocket, just in case you don't like their idea. Well, their idea was terrible. They wanted me to write um, a a day column with, you know, maybe 25 words uh, per sign. And I remember saying there was Harvard, Yale, and Dartmouth behind the table, you know, (laughs) in suits. And I said, I want to change the world, and I can't change it at 25 words per sign. And they're looking at me. I said, I want to write monthly. I want to write long. And then I went, we are time order. We must be the best. They haven't even hired me yet, but I I don't know what got into me. I'm listening to myself talk. And they said, this is a monthly column that's flying in the face of all web wisdom. I said, I think the web wisdom is good for other people, but astrology is different and people need to know about themselves. And if astrology is too short, it's confusing and misleading. I have to do a lot of background information with anything I tell people. And uh, then I told them what my mom told me, <laughs> what I told you earlier. And, and they all looked at each other. Because I said to them, you know, my mother said to go with the newest, the latest, the greatest. And then it went like this. Don't you see? This is my destiny. And they didn't know what to say. They were completely silent. And they were looking at the man in the middle. And he said, Susan, Time Inc. is not going to stand in your way. We're going to let you do anything you want to do because you're so passionate. The hardest part for me was when you typed in horoscope or astrology, Time Inc.'s website called Pathfinder, that's what it was called before AOL, um, said not fan out. I said, um, why, why is this happening? And they said, oh, the reporters at Time and Fortune and all our magazines don't like it that we have an astrologer. I said, so we can't change it. We're sorry, Stison. I said, it's okay. It's okay. I'm happy to be here. What we didn't figure out is that Newsweek and Yahoo and different companies were coming out with special editions like 25 sites we love and can't live without. And I was making the list. And my numbers are ballooning like crazy and they're like oh my goodness they couldn't believe it when they got involved with AOL uh, it was three years into my relationship and they said you have to leave Susan because this internet company is buying us I said oh they said we can't tell you yet I said you're buying them and they said no actually they're buying us I said this doesn't sound good but okay I had nowhere to go. Every door was being slammed in my face. It was um, 1998 when I started looking. I called Apple to thank them for writing a story about me called The Astrologer Who Believes in Apple. They kept coming out with products at the wrong time. I said, I have better launch dates for you. So they said, you're very interesting. Do you do charts on the map? I said, yes all the time. He said, oh, he said, pay attention to people who do interesting things on the map. We want to get to know you. And they wrote a beautiful story and they sent people to my website. So I said, I want to thank you and take you to dinner in a top restaurant in San Francisco. And as I'm coming down to San Francisco, everybody's calling. Can I come? Can I come? And I have this theory that aside from your parents who love you to the ends of the earth, There are maybe five people in this lifetime 
who really care about you, who will do anything for you, who really will support you. And you must always think about them. And Apple, to me, for writing that story about me, was one of the five. So I say to myself, I'm going to take everybody to dinner. And I don't care how much it costs. I'll put it on a credit card and I'll pay it off. And I get there and not everybody's there yet, but some of the main people are. And the, the waiter says, would you like some champagne? I, sure. Everybody's having champagne? Yes. Okay. And I said, here's my credit card. <laughs> and he said, you're too late. I said, what do you mean I'm too late? Not everybody's here yet. And he said, well, they paid yesterday. And the, the head person, Dan Rivers, who's now in charge of all video for Apple, he wrote the Apple store and he's brilliant. He's one of the eight that Steve chose to bring back to save Apple. He was laughing. He said, did you think Apple was going to make you pay for 14 dinners? I said, you keep getting it backwards. I want to help you. That's why I wrote to you. I was upset the way Steve was being portrayed in the press. And they wound up helping me. They said, you have nowhere to bring astrology zone? I said, no, I'm sort of at the end. Did you go to InfoSeek? I did, but they won't even give me an appointment. They think I'm a headhunter. I said, well, they're all former Apple people there. We will get you an appointment. I had an earth-shattering appointment. It was just great. They loved my idea. And InfoSeek became the Walt Disney Company a month later. So I wound up having my contract with the Walt Disney Company for three years. And then I was ready to hire my own team. It was a big decision. It's like jumping off a cliff into turquoise water below. It's so, you know, Mexican, beautiful place. But um, I did it. And the way you impart this knowledge is, and we, we've kind of alluded to it, is these charts. That's how you kind of, and you talked about your chart with, that your mom had, had read to you when you were a kid. Yeah. And I gave you my information for a chart. And so let's, so for folks uh, unfamiliar with this territory, when, when uh, you said you were going to have, you were, kind enough to join me today you need to know that the, my date of birth where i was born and the time right that that's the essential you need for a chart yeah, well i need the time because we convert everybody to greenwich me time england so okay. that we have a common denominator got it all right so you have that so you have my information what is uh what does joe part of you chart say what, what, what how to well look first at of all you are a a capricorn so I knew right away how hardworking you are. Capricorn takes their job seriously, and they want to see growth and progress all the time. They're not happy. The little goat, they're not happy unless they see growth. Their little legs, the little goat that is your motif, goes up the mountain, and all the other little animals are, you know, trying to get up there too. But when you get above the tree line, the little turtles are on their back with their feet in the air, and the other little animals are taking a nap and saying, what's going on? Oh, we're tired. Oh, well, I'm going to keep on going. Maybe I'll see you later. And the little ankles of the goat can walk along very narrow path and they get to the summit. They always get to the summit. Plato wrote about Capricorn and called them the philosopher kings of the Zodiac because they took exquisite care of people in their employ. And they um, they had sound judgment and uh, could separate emotions from the decision and, and to use facts uh, to base their decisions on. Uh, they do very well in multinational companies where the structure and the hierarchy, the mountain, is very clear. Almost like the military, I can aim for that post and that post and then that post because they're always aiming for higher up on the mountain. <laughs> okay, all right, good, all right. So we know who, are, uh, who I am. I'm, I'm a Capricorn. I'm the goat with the skinny legs. Uh, and well, you've well, got well, you Aries that. rising. You were really meant to have your own business. If if you had stayed working for other people your whole life, I don't think you would have been as happy as you are now. Aries has to start things. If they do work for other people, they have to be autonomous and work in their own area and, and be the boss of the department. 
but their their um their persona is laid to Jason and the Argonauts, the myth, and he had to fight you you know these octopus and sea monsters. What Ares is great at is putting together the dream team. The each person contributes something special that the others don't have, and it, it becomes so successful. So so there you are. You have the Aries rising. Okay. And the ruler of Aries, we have to look, what rules Aries? Mars. And Mars is in the house of other people's money. So you have the magic touch to get funding if you ever need it, whether personally for a mortgage or anything. Anytime you need a bank loan, they're opening the door, rolling out the red carpet and offering you a toaster. <laughs> But if you need venture capital for business, you have that touch. You're you're good and you're you're fearless because Aries is fearless. Now Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn's down on the bottom of your chart, where the sixth would be on the clock, and that's the home. So you want a stable home, and I think you bought a house uh, where you live now. Yeah, and yeah. that's. Very good, because someone with your chart needs the foundation. Because if if they're living in a place where they don't know if they're going to stay, it's like the chart is always rocky, and they never feel stable. And if you don't feel stable, you can't go out in the world and create other things. You need that base, and you particularly need it. Um, you have Venus at the very top of your chart in the house of profession and the contribution you give to the world. Venus up there makes you so loved. <laughs> All right. And it's not just your followers and the people who tune in. It's the bosses. <laughs> it's it's the whole group. <laughs> and Venus will bring money because Venus always carried her silk purse with gold points. Now, this year, you have Jupiter the giver of gifts and luck, the great benefactor in your house of money. Now, you haven't had Jupiter there for 12 years, not since 2012, actually. And this is the year of great financial reward. All right. And you have all the way to June 9th next year, 2025, because he's setting up shop there and he's going to stay. Uh, you have Saturn behind the scenes. That's a kind of, we call that a caving house. That's an easy house to have Saturn. But when he, well, see, you're at 29 degrees. You are so close to having Taurus rising that if you were born like four minutes later, you would have been Taurus rising. And it sounds like you gave me a very precise time of birth. That is not uh, now. What does that mean if a Taurus rising? Yeah, you're you're just inches away from from Taurus rising, but knowing you a little from being on your show in past years, you seem to be much more energetic at Aries and self starter. Taurus is slower, like the little bull likes to smell the roses and. I, I have a publicist, and I said to her, uh, she's Taurus, and I said, you know, Taurus on a Friday night likes to stay home, pour a glass of wine, open their bank statement, and admire it. Look how well <laughs> I'm doing. <laughs> said, I do do that regularly. I said, yeah, I know. You're a Taurus. You're wow. such a little Taurus. And, and, and she's not materialistic. She's Taurus is kind of... Um, like a game, like how well I can, you know, can I pick the right stops and, you know, work with my advisor and, and can I build a nest egg? Cause the nest egg is important. And you have, when you're on the cusp as you are, you know, many people said to me, I'm a cusp baby. I'm, I'm nobody's baby. I said, no, no, no. Just the opposite. You have all the best qualities of Aries and all the best qualities of Taurus. You have both because on those lines right on the cusp 
you're you're partaking of both. So you have that need to build a nest egg and to see financial success. And at the same time, you're a self-starter and you want to have your own thing. And, and that's a good instinct. Well, Susan, thank you very much for doing my chart. That was really cool. Thank, very informative. Wrapping up the end of 2024. What signs, what, what, what folks should uh, be on the lookout? Like, in any, Well, just there's something headlines. that's going to affect us all. And if you're listening, and let's say you're a manager or you have your own business, launch your most important things either um, September or October or the very first week in November, first 10 days. We have two problems coming at the end of this year. And it's right after the election. And it doesn't matter who gets in. This is going to happen. First, Mercury will retrograde from November 27th until December 15th. That's not good news for the holiday shopping season. You should never buy any electronics or anything expensive. But a more concerning problem is Mars retrograde. Mars is the energy planet. And... He's starting to slow down already in November, but by December 6th, he takes a nap and he stays sleeping until February 23rd. Now, astrology is based on mathematical cycles. Look what I'm looking at. When Mars is healthy, he goes one degree in two days, a half a degree a day, one degree, two days. At the beginning of December, he's taking 18 days to go one degree. We're walking through glue. There could be a mild baby recession. Baby recession. Do not call your broker and, and pull all your money into your house under your mattress. No, no, no. It will be mild. We will come out of it by April 30th. It's good to know when the pain ends, right? It's a yeah. mild little... Recession. If you're in sales, you'll feel it the most. And you'll you'll say, gee, clients can't seem to make up their mind. Or they'll say, I don't have my new budget for 2025. Well, by January, you should have it. Mm, no, it won't be ready until the end of February. And things will really start cooking because I can see it mathematically until the end of April. So from November to April, you don't want to launch new things. You know, you want to launch them now when it's nice and healthy or in the spring, May, June, July, you know, spring, summer. It's good to know astrology. There are cycles in life. Everything is cycles. Day and night, um, women are very connected to cycles, but the seasons are cyclical and the stock market's cyclical. Everything is cyclical. So you just, you make safe investments and, um, and you're smart. You come out with your new product in September or October. Awesome. Good stuff. Susan Miller, it's always great catching up with you. Uh, if folks want to connect with you, we, we've heard it, we've said it a bunch of times. It's astrologyzone.com. Uh, yes. Again, I appreciate our, our friendship. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. And that's today's good listen. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to connect with me, you can find me on X, LinkedIn, or Instagram at Joe Partavilla or TikTok at Jay Partavilla. If you want to shoot me a note and tell me your story, email me, Joe Partavilla at protonmail.com. If you are watching this on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. It's a small gesture, but it really helps my channel. And if you happen to be listening to this on Apple or Spotify, I would really appreciate it if you leave a five-star review. Thanks again for listening. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Adios.